Welcome to the Live Leadership Podcast with myself, Leela Singh. All things coaching, career and personal branding. This podcast is for ambitious career professionals like you, wanting to create a life of choice and freedom, to be, do and have more through overcoming limitations, to develop new perspectives and insights and to redefine your success, be that in work, health, relationships, and so much more. Hi there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Live with Leela. My name is Leela Singh, and I am a leadership, career, and personal brand coach. My mission is to impact 100,000 people's career trajectory beyond what they thought possible. Why? Because I'm passionate about helping you to realize what is truly possible for you in your career and in your life. How do I do this? Through harnessing your leadership potential. I coach high achieving, ambitious and driven career professionals who are typically mid to senior level within their field, who are looking to get promoted, to achieve peak performance and a standout personal brand all while showing up as the best version of themselves, what I call life leadership. Okay, so today's topic, building your connections for career advancement. It's not what you know, but who you know. How many times have you heard that said? For me, you want to add to that because it's not only about who you know, it's about who knows you and what they know about you. And building a robust network isn't just a strategy, it's a fundamental element for your success and your career advancement. And despite how important this is, what I've realized is that the, the art of building those meaningful professional connections is so often undervalued and overlooked. And having this oversight can stall our career trajectories and limit your opportunities. So today, what I want to do is to delve into why building connections is crucial for your career advancement. We'll explore the common challenges that you might be facing when it comes to nurturing these relationships. And I will be offering you five strategic approaches, all simple, not easy as always. So simple, not easy means, yes, they're simple, but the easy bit means you need to apply yourself. You need to take the time to work on it and then to implement. And these are their approaches to cultivating a powerful professional network. So first of all, why does building connections really matter to you or for you, should I say? Here's the first thing, career opportunity and visibility. Opportunities often arise in an informal setting. So, for example, a recommendation from a trusted colleague can be key to unlocking a role that hasn't been advertised or a project that requires a specific skill set that you possess. And perhaps people weren't aware of and it comes up in that informal conversation or what you often hear termed as that water cooler conversation. And your connections can elevate your visibility within your organization, even beyond your organization. So within the industry, for example, and making you the go to person for your expertise. So this is why it matters. The second reason it matters because it provides you with access to resources and to information. So when you've got a well nurtured network, this provides you with access to valuable information, to insights that maybe aren't readily available through other formal channels. And this, for example, could be market intelligence, it could be trends, it could be upcoming challenges that are being talked about in the industry, something you may not necessarily read on your socials, on your LinkedIn, but actually people are aware of it, they're having conversations. And by being part of those conversations, you can pick things up far more easily than having to go Googling things and searching for things. And by the way, if you don't know what you're searching for, then how do you search? Whereas 
if you've got that network around you who are already talking about things, you will start to pick up and become more aware of what is happening. And this can be absolutely pivotal when it comes to strategic decision making for you. And of course, staying ahead in your career, so staying one step ahead. The third reason that building connections matters is personal growth and support. So building your connections facilitates that personal growth. How does it do that? Because you get to engage with diverse individuals and this exposes you to new ideas, a new way of looking at things, so new perspectives, and it enhances your personal and your professional development. And having a strong network can offer support for you in those challenging times, providing advice, encouragement, and so much more. So there's a lot of advantages to putting in the time and the energy to building your connections. So what are the common challenges that people face? Clearly, there are a number of benefits, but there are significant hurdles that people can face or encounter when it comes to building those connections. For example, time constraints. It's, you know, you're, dem you're juggling a demanding role. Uh, you've obviously got your personal commitments going on. Finding time to then network can seem daunting and then this can lead to you neglecting the relationship building activity. So this is one of the main challenges. The second one is misunderstanding networking. And there is a common misconception that networking is a self-serving tactic. Many people that I speak to have this as a belief. By the way, it was my belief very, very early on in my career that it was all about just getting what you want and brown nosing with people to, to move up the career ladder. No, networking isn't about that. Of course, we can choose the meaning that we use to put onto the word networking. For me, networking is simply having conversations with people, being curious, getting to know them, learning about others, what the, you know, their interests, what they're up to, what the, the role that they're in, you know, the challenges they're facing. It is just about creating conversations. I say this many times, one conversation can change your life. So for me, when I think networking, I just think talking to people, having conversations. And it just becomes so much more lighter and easier and fun. And the challenge we have when we think of it as simply self-serving is that it could deter people from then engaging in the networking activities because it they, they fear it being manipulative or insincere. So as I said, if you think about it simply as having conversations with people, getting to know people, also looking at how you can help people. Maybe they're struggling with something that you have the knowledge, the expertise, the skills to help and support them. So don't look about what you can get from this. This is about having conversations, being curious about others, looking for ways that you can help and support other people. Because trust me, what we give out comes back to us. And when we come from a place of serving from wanting to help others energetically, we will attract that back into our world. So that is the second challenge that people face. It's the meaning we put around networking. The third challenge that people face is virtual work environments, because of course, there's a rise in the remote working landscape. And this has created a, a now an even bigger or a newer challenge for people when it comes to networking. So without those physical interactions, as I said, the water cooler conversation or just going to grab a coffee from the kitchen or the cafe together, it makes those interactions a lot harder. It makes having the spontaneous conversations even more difficult. So it, this is why I say it's simple yet not so easy because it means that building your connections requires more deliberate efforts to be able to reach out and engage with your peers. Now that might look like, for example, um, people that you want to talk to, reaching out and just saying, let's have a coffee over Zoom for 10 minutes, or um, you know, going into arranging to go into the office on a day and meet reaching out to others to coordinate so you're all in the office together, so you can have a catch up, a coffee, maybe go for lunch together and just connect with those people, have those conversations that you probably wouldn't otherwise have when you are working from your remote home office. And this is one of the things that for me was one of the, 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 the most enjoyable parts of my career was being able to go into the office and be amongst colleagues and my team and my peers, other people across the business, 
because you're always getting to connect and meet new people, have conversations, learn about what's going on in other parts of the business, um, hear about people's struggles, how you could maybe support them in some way. So for me, it's something I really love to do. And that's probably the biggest thing that I miss from my corporate career is having that. But unfortunately, it's not really there for a lot of organizations anymore. So again, it's thinking about, OK, so what is it that you can do? What effort do you need to make to be able to still maintain and sustain that level of engagement, those conversations with people? Um, so those are common challenges, time constraints, misunderstanding what networking actually means and the rise of the virtual remote working environment. So now what I want to share with you, as promised, is the art of connection. So five simple strategies for success when it comes to building your connections and to help you to overcome the challenges that we've discussed and harness those powers of connections. So number one is being curious about other people. So people are more than just their job titles or their functions. So when I said earlier, be curious, show genuine interest in their personal lives, their interests. Not everyone wants to share personally, and that's OK. But you can start to gauge from conversations and asking if people want to hold back. Some people want to talk more than you've got time for. So it's just trying to gauge that to understand the different people, what works, what doesn't work. But when you do this, when you actually be curious and start to really want to learn about other people genuinely, it can lead to deepening those relationships and think, maybe ask about their hobbies, what their passions are, life outside of work. Maybe they're, they support a football team or rugby and um, cricket. You know, maybe it's a sports thing or they, they, they're a runner. You know, they, they play in a sport. You know, there's, you know that they, there's certain nights that they leave the to go to work, to, sorry, leave work to go um, to participate in an activity. So find out, show interest in that because this not only makes your interactions more meaningful, but it also builds that report that goes beyond simply professional courtesy. So that's number one, being curious about others. Number two, connect beyond your immediate team. What I mean by that is often People limit their networking within their direct team or department. And I have seen this so much over the years. They don't speak to people in a big open plan office who are outside of their own team. However, reaching out to those individuals who work in different uh, parts of the business, in different teams, and even outside your organization, for example, in, in, in the industry, can broaden your understanding of the business of what's happening in your industry, as well as increasing your visibility across the organization and the industry. So making you more visible. Attend, for example, cross-departmental meetings, industry conferences or events that are around, you know, on the topics that you are interested in when it comes to your career. So you can stay ahead of the curve. You've got the latest information. You can bring that into conversation with people and demonstrate your knowledge and your expertise. Think about maybe seminars that you could attend. What are the, um, what we call, I think they used to be called ERGs, um, employee resource groups that some of the big corporates have. Are there ERGs or similar networking groups within the organization that you can become a part of, which means that you'll get to meet people outside of your immediate team. So think laterally here. How can you connect beyond your immediate team? And I do see some people on LinkedIn who are phenomenal at doing this. They're always sharing about um, industry events that they're attending and areas that they're really passionate about, where there's a lot of um, common interest and support. And they go and they attend these events and they're building out their network and supporting others at the same time. So think about how you could do that. And as I said, it, it creates that visibility. People get to know about you and what you bring to the table. And this is important when it comes to advancing your career. The third strategy I want to share with you is support and helping others, which I've kind of just touched upon. But the law of reciprocity plays a significant role when it comes to networking. So look for those opportunities to assist others, whether it's offering your expertise, maybe providing some resources to an individual or connecting someone to another professional in your network. Your willingness to help will really truly be reciprocated in the future, not necessarily from that person, but it will come back to you in another way. 
Number four is being authentic and building the trust. So authenticity is really crucial when it comes to building a lasting connection. So please be yourself. Let your interactions be guided with integrity and sincerity. This isn't about putting on a facade to try and impress people. It's about being your best self, understanding what value you bring to the table, showing up with that confidence and conviction in yourself and your abilities and building trust with people because trust is the foundation of any strong relationship and being genuine is the best way to foster that trust. And finally, number five, when it comes to the strategies for success is to engage regularly and meaningfully. So building connections is not a one off task. It's not something you're going to schedule into your diary to do, um, I don't know, in the middle of July and then check back again in a year's time. It's a, it requires continuous effort. And this is what I mean about it being simple, but not easy because it requires you to carve out time to do this. So regularly check in with your contacts, share updates, perhaps. So if you've attended an event and you've gained some new insights and takeaways that you think would benefit other people, share it, put a post that on LinkedIn or, or write a post and then share that post with some of your close connections directly send it through them the messenger system on LinkedIn things like that that just show that you're thinking about other people that you are learning you are growing and you have the value to bring congratulate people when you see them announcing their achievements whether it's a new certification um, an award at work perhaps it's a new role um, a promotion they've started a new company Sh congratulate people share in their celebration because these interactions, however small you may think they are, they keep the relationship alive and they show that you value the connection. And believe me, people will remember. So don't simply wait until you are in the job market and then you suddenly start reaching out to everyone and asking for help. It doesn't always land well. So I'm sharing this with you. If you're in work, You've got a great job, you've got a great career, you're ambitious, you're wanting to move up. Start thinking about all of this now and the strategies that you can start to implement today to build out your connections. And here, here's the thing. Aiming for the top, wanting to move up the career ladder, stepping into leadership, for example. If you ignore the power of connections, of, of cultivating and nurturing your network, it can be a critical oversight. Building and nurturing your network is akin to, to cultivating a garden. It, re it requires that patience. It requires strategy and genuine care. This is not a five minute exercise. It's not a one off exercise. It's an ongoing process. And by employing the five strategies that I have shared, I will just recap on those for you. So firstly, be curious about others. Second, connect beyond your immediate team. So think laterally about who you can connect with. Number three, support and help others. Number four is be authentic and build trust. And five is engage meaningfully and regularly. So by employing these strategies, you can unlock those doors to new opportunities simply through conversations that you're having with people. You'll gain valuable insights and you will accelerate your career growth in, in ways that simply remaining isolated can never help in the same way. It will hold you back, it will hinder you. Those isolated efforts cannot match building out your network, your connections, and putting that meaning into it on a regular basis. So my invitation to you today is to start building your connections from today, from now, from this week, and pave the way for a successful and a fulfilling career for you. As I said, any questions you have on this, please do pop them in the comments. I will come back and respond to them. Let me know what resonated from for you today. Let me know what action you are going to take. What was the number one strategy that you thought, hey, actually, I hadn't thought about that. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start implementing that when it comes to um, my networking and my building out relationships. In the meantime, remember to harness your potential to elevate your performance and to strive towards growth 
by pursuing that next role, that next promotion, that next big project and showing up as the best version of you. Have a great rest of the week. If you're in the UK, enjoy the sunshine and I will see you same time, same place next week. Until then, take care and thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already done so. And if you enjoyed and gained value from today's episode, then do please leave a review telling us your key learnings and what you enjoyed the most. And do please share this podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can spread the word on life leadership, creating a life of choice, freedom and new possibilities. Connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And if you would like to learn more about how we can work together, either DM me on LinkedIn or email me. All details and resources can be found in the show notes.